Protruding is spelled P P P A True T R U D I N G. Protruding. Netflix. Bitch, that's how it sounds. That's how it's spelled. Okay, you spell it. You tell me. P P A True T A T R U D D I N G. Protruding. Period. I just said that. I just said that. What did I say? Oh, well, I said P R A. I meant P R O. Okay, I said okay, but I got everything else right. The fuck. <laughs> I just wasn't pronunciating it right. Why the fuck you didn't tell me it was? It was why? Why you didn't tell me it was protruding instead of pro? See how y'all see how y'all cast in the bucket. If y'all really care about the black sense, y'all are really genocide. Y'all genocide. Y'all commit genocide every fucking day on this app. Y'all are some motherfuckers who kill people's spirits. Y'all try to kill my spirit, but I y'all got the right bitch, so I ain't the one. But y'all are committing genocide on this app. Trying to tear down the black people, the so-called Negroes. You could have just said it was it's called protruding instead of pro. The fuck y'all that's not even a, protruding that's not even a part of y'all vocabulary. Y'all don't even have that a part of y'all vocabulary. I use big words. The fuck? Wish you could get like me. Mm-mm-mm. And it get like me. Girl, I'm not dumb. Let me show you how dumb I'm not. Where is my shit at? It's time to go to class. Oh, my ribs is hurting. Oh, I can't even do no sit up because I was doing them sit ups. That's why my fucking ribs. Oh, oh, so my ribs hurt. So we're gonna learn. We're gonna get do our, another. Well, I wanna do another pretest. <sighs> this is learn to earn. The fuck, watch me kill it. Get my GED on you hoes. You want me to be a failure all my life, but I'ma rise up. And defeat the odds. And this. Um, I'm looking for the email address so I can log in. Or is it gd is gd dot com? No, it's not. Girl, y'all do all of y'all do not have masters on here. Shut up. Some of y'all only got a high school diploma, and some of y'all don't even got a ninth grade education. So shut the fuck up. Y'all is no better than me. And I swear y'all better than somebody because y'all sit behind the phone and I'm live. Show your real face. Show your real life, girl. None of y'all can't do it. Most of y'all can't do what I do because y'all embarrassed about y'all life and I'm not. So y'all hide behind the phone and try to talk shit about me. Because most people that talk shit about you got the most shit going on in their life. Girl, ain't nobody give a fuck about no bigo check, girl. Good for you. Hallelujah. Okay, I need to log into my account. If I can see. Oh, 
Essentials Education. That's what it's called. Let me lock into my um my account. I got real accounts over here. I'm doing my big one. Period. And it's Girl, why are you, why are you studying me? <laughs> are you studying at school during a class? No. Okay, I got a message. What's the message? Okay. Now, we're going to look up some courses GED Academy welcome to the GED Academy my name is Leonard and I'm gonna be your personal teacher my job is to help Ain't you nobody want to hear that testing. shit Leonard Damn. so what's three times five for 15 15 hours a week. No, we're going to deduct that shit. I don't need three hours to study. What's two times five? Ten hours a week. That's how many hours I'm going to dedicate to my study. Monday through Friday, girl. Two hours a day, Monday through Friday. Start with the easier subject first. Still have questions, get help here. So I'm gonna go into the reading. I'm gonna just take the test. Can I just take the test again? Cause this is some bullshit. I don't wanna take the class. Just give me the test. Take a practice test. I want to start self um, assessment. I wanna take a practice test. Okay, welcome to the reading comprehension practice test. There are 15 questions in this test. The goal is to give you a practice on the type of questions you will see on the GED test and to give you a study plan for what you need to brush up on for the test. If you are unsure of an answer, click review question later to come back to the question later. There are four versions of the reading comprehension practice test. You will be able to retake the test as often as you choose. Okay, y'all ready? Let's get it. So when I if I if I don't fail if I don't if I if I pass this test, I'm ready to take the GD test. If I fail this test, they're gonna give me a study plan to take afterwards. Okay? So that's why it's good to take the GD test, okay? Let's get it. King says, let's read this first. Another thing, okay, the power of no violence, nonviolence, a speech by oh, here we go. The fuck Martin Luther King Jr. Anybody wanna hear this shit? I just got done talking about this bald headed nigga. Damn. Now they want to give me fucking questions about Martin Luther King. Ain't that about a bitch. See, this is the devil. Here we go. Let's learn about his bald headed ass. The power of nonviolence. The speech of Martin Luther King Jr. Another thing another thing that we had to get over was the fact that we that the fact Oh shit. Okay. Let me start over. Another thing that we had to get over. <laughs> okay, hold on. Another thing that we had to get over was the fact that the nonviolence register does not seek to humiliate or defeat the opponent, but to win his friendship and understanding. This was all, always a cry that we had to set before people that our aim was not to defeat the white community, not to humiliate the white community, but to win the friendship of all the persons who have pre. pre, pre, pre oh, shit. Who have pre penetrated oh 
who had perpetrated, 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 you know what I mean, perpetrated. The persons who has per perpetrated, there we go. <sighs> Let me calm down, breathe. But the winner for the friendship of all the persons, all the people, all the persons who had. Okay, let me talk. I'm, I'm about to think. This shit making my head hurt already, bro. It's like my anxiety. I'm so nervous. I need some weed. That's probably what it is. Calm down. It's okay. Okay. Let me try again. Okay. It's just the anxiety. I have really bad anxiety. Okay, so, but to win the friendship of all the people who have per, um, who had per, who had, <sighs> per, per, preparated, prep, perpetrated who have perpetrated this system in the past. The end of violence of the aftermath of violence is bitterness. The aftermath of nonviolence is reconciliation and the creation of a beloved community. A boycott is never an end within itself. It is merely a means to awaken a sense of shame within the oppressor, but the end is to re Reconciliation, reconciliation, the end is redemption. It's making my head hurt. Oh my God. Another basic thing we had to get over is that nonviolence resistance is also an inter, I mean, it's also an internal matter. It not only avoids internal violence or external physical violence, but it also internal violence of spirit. And so at the center of our movement stood the philosophy of love the attitude that the only way to ultimately change humanity and make the society that we all long for is to keep love at the center of our life now people used to ask me from the beginning what do you mean by love and how is it that you can tell us to love those persons who seek to defeat us and those persons who stand against us? How can you love such persons? And I had to make it clear all along that love in its in its that love in its highest sense is not a sentimental sort of thing, not even an affectionate sort of thing. Then we had to make it clear also that the nonviolence resistor seeks. Seeks what? Oh my God. Seeks to attack the um, evil system rather than individuals who happen to be caught up in the system. And this is why I say from time to time that the struggle in the South is not so much the tension between white people and Negro people. The struggle is rather between justice and injustice, between the forces of light and the forces of darkness. And there is a victory. It would not be a victory merely for 50,000 Negroes, but it's a victory of justice, a victory of goodwill, a victory of democracy. So it says in the question, King says that nonviolent resistor seeks to attack the evil system rather than individuals who happen to be caught up in the system. How does this statement support King's main argument? So King says that the nonviolent resistor seek to attack the evil system rather than individuals who happen to be caught up in the system. How does this sub statement support King's main argument? It forces 
it forces on an evil system rather on evil individuals. It's, it shows that shame and humiliation will defeat an opponent. It shows that good good will ultimately trump for it, trump it over evil. It demonstrates that violence splits apart the community. This is hard to attack the system rather than individuals who is caught up. So let's go back to this actual thing. When did he say that it? Okay, then we had to make it clear that I saw that the, the non-violence resistors seek to attack the evil system rather the individuals who happen to caught up in the system. And this is why I say from time to time that the struggle in the South is not so much the tension between white people and Negro people. The struggle is rather between justice and injustice, between forces of darkness. Okay, it, sh it forces on an evil system rather than on evil individuals. I'm going to go with that. It shows that shame in human name would be. It shows that good will ultimately trump over evil. It demonstrates that violence splits between the community. I'm gonna go with that, which I think. Tell me. It forces on an evil system rather than evil individuals. D, it demonstrates the violence splits apart the community. I'm gonna go with A. <sighs> Let's see what it is. We don't know at the end. But that's fine because whatever I don't have, it's fine. Because whatever I don't get right, they're gonna help me. Question two. What the fuck? Why is we gonna we gonna have these big ass, long ass mother let me read the question first, because this is ridiculous. Okay, now I gotta read it. <clears throat> The following is an expert from the first fireside chat President Franklin Delon Roosevelt gave, okay? This chat was given after he had declared a bank holiday in an effort to stop mass withdrawals by people worried about bank failures. My friends, I want to talk for a few minutes with the people of the United States about banking, to talk with the comparatively few who understands the mechanics of banking, but more particularly with the overwhelming majority of you who use banks for the making of deposits and the drawing of checks. I wanna tell you what has been done in the last few days and what is and why it was done and what the next steps are going to be. I recognize that the many proclamations from the state capitol and from Washington, the legislation, the treasurer, tragedy regulations and so forth couch for the most part in banking in legal terms ought to be explained for the benefit of the average citizen i owe this in particular because of the fortitude and the good temper with which everybody have accepted the inconvenience and the hardship of banking holidays and i know that when you understand when we in washington have been about i should continue to have your cooperation as fully as I have had your sympathy and your help during the past week. First of all, let me state that the simple fact that when you deposit money in a bank, the bank does not put the money into a safe deposit vault. It invests your money in many different forms of credit, in bonds, in commercial paper, in mortgages, and in other kinds of loans. Shit. What the fuck is this? I know you fucking lie. Ah! 
Now, why would they do this dumbass shit? Oh, my God. Wow. So, I got to start the fuck over? This is the devil. Oh, my God. This is the reason why I don't be wanting to do shit. Because this Welcome shit is fucking irritating. Account. Shut your black My ass up. Ain't nobody care about that shit. Personal teacher. My job is to help you Shut pass up. The GED test. Your job was to make sure I fucking stayed on task and not move me from the fucking screen. Damn. Not on there. All that motherfucking reading for nothing. Oh, yeah, they took me back to where I was at. Damn. <sighs> In other words, the bank puts your money to work to keep the wheels of industry and of architecture turning around. A comparatively small part of the money that you put into the banks is kept in currency. An amount which is normal times is wholly sufficient to cover the cash needs to the average citizen. What then happened during the last few days of February and of the few days of March, because of the undermined confidence on the part of the public, there was a general rush by a large portion of our population to turn back deposits into gold currency blah 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 so let's read this because this is irritating me what's the question what is president roosevelt purpose for speaking his purpose is to explain banking to the public to deceive the public about we know that's not it to tell heart-wrenching stories that's not it to calm the public fears about banking failures I'm going to say to calm the public fears about banking. See, it's so hard because it looked like this may be it or it may be this to explain banking to the public. What y'all think? To explain banking to the public, to the team, to calm. I'm going to just say this, to calm the public fears and bank failures. I'm just going to say that. Let's hope it's right since y'all don't like to help. Which of the following best describes President Roosevelt's main message? Inconvenience and hardships simply have to be endured. The bank holiday will help restore the national, the nation's financial and economy, economic, uh, economic stability. A week ago... Scarcely a bank in the country was open for a business. Few people understand banking because it's a compl complicated industry, in, uh, industry. So what is the following best describes main message? It is the inconvenience and hardship. Nope. The banking holiday will help restore. Nope. Few people understand banking because it is a complicated industry. I think a week ago, a bank in the country was open for business. No, I'm going to go with this. The bank holiday will help restore the fin the nation's financial and economy stability. That's what I'm going to go with. And I can look at the first message, which is the first main idea. Apparently, free understanding. And then let me go with the last paragraph. What did it say? Yes, that's it. That's the answer. I might have all, if I get all of these right, I'm ready. If I get one of these wrong, I'm still ready for my GD. So if I get all right or one wrong, I'm still ready for my GD. If I get two questions wrong, got a 15 questions, I'm not ready. I just need to study more. 
And but two questions out of 15 questions, not that bad. Okay. In the first passage, what is the author's main claim? Okay, let's read the first passage. Genetic modified food can could they eliminate famine? Between the years of blah blah blah, Ireland Ireland endured seven years of mass starvation known as the Great Hunger. Approximately one million people starved to death, another two million fled into Africa to, to save themselves and their family. The immediate cause of the famine was a blight that killed potato crops throughout Europe. Ireland suffered most from the potato blight because of the third of its population was totally dependent on the the crop. The, 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 the. Okay, so what is the first passage in the, of the author's main claim? I'm going to go with this. Ireland famine caused mass immigration. 